Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to talk to you about something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, a, a part of my, my very soul, really. I'm going to bear a part of my personal philosophy, my beliefs, and generally I don't go here on the channel. There's too much possibility for... for for controversy, for, 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 no, 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 no. But today I, I want to share you something I, I truly deeply believe in. And that, of course, is Unix. Of course, I'm talking here about the family of operating systems rather than the uh, snip snip Unix. This is U-N-I-X that I'm after here. Unix is an absolutely amazing thing. This is, a, a, for those of you not in the technological know, it's just, a, it's software, right? It's a, a series of tools that allow you to accomplish tasks on computers. But my goal here is to show you how some of the guiding philosophical principles of this software actually uh, are really, really applicable to everyday carry gear and make your life, if you think about it in this way, make your life in your everyday tools uh, much better in the same way it makes your uh, daily tools and computer world much better. By the way, I am 100% a Unix nut. I am writing this review in Vim, although I used Emacs for a while. I've swung back to that side. I answer a lot of my emails in mud. I've built my own computers in the past, and I, I daily drove Gentoo for a while. Unix is a part of my very soul. I just can't use a computer that doesn't have the the ability to go to bash these days, you know, Mac OS, Linux, whatever I can do fine, but oof. Uh, yeah. So anyways, I, 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 I am deeply steeped in this, but I really truly believe that Unix philosophy applies well to everyday carry gear. And so I want to talk about three core tenets of Unix philosophy and how it applies just as well to this kind of stuff that I normally talk about on the channel, right? And so the three things I'm going to talk about are the idea of do one thing and do it well, uh, the, the idea of writing things to work together rather than being separated out, and then choosing portability over efficiency and using standard formats. So, okay. Uh, the do one thing, do it well is very straightforward to think about in the EDC world, right? If nothing else, a pocket knife is the perfect expression of this. A lot of people will ask me things like, well, Nick, come on, why do you carry a multi-tool and a pocket knife? What what, what gives? Your multi-tool, this is the Leatherman Charge TTI, this has a pocket knife on it, it's perfectly serviceable, why would you do that? Well, the fact is, a pocket knife does it better. This is the uh, TRM Neutron 2, by the way, um, but this is just a slightly nicer blade. It's a little slicier, it's easier to get to, it's easier to get in and out of the pocket, it's just, it is, frankly, just a better pocket knife than the one that's built into the multi-tool, right? In, in pretty much every meaningful way. Um, and the, frankly, a pocket knife generally is a perfect example of this because it is a unitasker. A pocket knife exists for one purpose, which is to physically separate things. It is to cut. It is to slice. Those kinds of things. That is what a pocket knife is good for, but it does it really, really well. And so carrying a dedicated tool for a job you do uh, very often, whether that's opening boxes, breaking down cardboard, you know, popping open clamshell packaging, having a dedicated tool that does that well, that is an absolutely beautiful thing. And oftentimes, you will gain more benefit from having that dedicated tool, right? You can think of all of the kind of multitaskers in the world, like your Nick Chavez, Blade HQ, uh, Victorinox. Sorry, that was a bad plug. But, you know, all there are lots of things out there that combine these things. You can get, like, your combination flashlight pen thing. And usually what you get there is a bad flashlight and a bad pen, right? That, that, it's not ideal. So it might be a better idea to get a really good pen. This is the, um, the shown design of... Uh, uh, pocket six uh, in their faceted finish, but it might be a good idea to get a really good pen and carry that rather than a bad flashlight slash pen. Get a good flashlight and carry that through night neutron through seas, it says right there. Get a, a watch that just does watching, right? It's not like a smartphone. It's not trying to do notifications. It's not going to run out of battery halfway through the day because Instagram had a bad update or something like that. It's just going to tell you the freaking time. And if it stops telling you the time, you wind it back up again and it tells you the time again. Again, right? There's a lot of joy to having dedicated tools for things. And so that can be really helpful. Um, and so the other way to think about this is to do one thing and do it well. When I say do it well, I mean pick a good tool for the job, right? There are so many really bad tools out there in the world, right? I, I, and I have no shortage of terrible tools uh, that have come across my table, and, and, and I have no shortage of tools that are okay, but they're not actually that good. And to me, that's just as bad, right? If you are carrying one thing to do one job, just carry a thing that works well, right? Don't carry a bad flashlight if you can afford to have a better one. And by the way, you probably can. There are lots of gems, even at the budget level. Don't carry a watch that is in accurate when you can have something that actually keeps the time properly. Don't carry a knife that goes dull every 30 seconds, etc. This is an absolutely important thing. Don't tolerate problems with that 
one thing that you're depending on to do that one job well. There's a role for multi-tools. There's a role for generalists, right? There's a role for things that can do many things all at once, but the fact is they will never do their job as well. These will never be as good a set of pliers as a good set of pliers. This will never be as good a saw as a good saw. So if you end up doing a lot of sawing, you know what? Just bite the bullet and carry a freaking saw and be done with it. A dedicated tool will be a beautiful thing. Um, and so it's a really important uh, idea here. Do one thing, do it well, and make sure that it does things securely. It does things good, like in a good all-around way, like the, the, the Spyderco PM2 is a great all-around pocket knife. Make sure it's secure, it locks up. And speaking of security, actually, you want to make sure your tools are good and robust and secure. We want all of our things in our lives to be secure. And in fact, your internet ex access is no exception. So that's why you want to make sure you're using a good, good VPN. And so I'd like to talk about the sponsor of today's video, my Patreon patrons. Uh, you had you for a moment there. Uh, okay, anyways, sorry about that. I've been watching too much YouTube lately, and so I, I'm getting the influencer sponsor thing, the, the, the tricks, but no, uh, no. Thanks, patrons. Anyways, security is an important part of this, but, you know, in practice, dedication and having small tools that do the one thing really well is important because those simple tools are less likely to fail and they're more likely to be really good for that task. Second thing, now that I've done my sponsor plug, um, is to uh, write things that work together. In the Unix world, this involves oftentimes combining utilities. You'll you take the output from one, you'll put it into the next one, you'll put it into the next one, the next one. And so by stringing six things together, you end up doing exactly what you needed rather than having to use one piece of software with that buried in 15 freaking menus. It is an absolutely wonderful thing and the power of this approach cannot be overstated from a bunch of small elements, you end up with something that is better than the whole. And that's kind of a really important thing in the daily carry world too. You wanna to make sure that your daily tools complement each other well. And this can be in a bunch of different approaches. For instance, if you are going to carry something that is relatively thin and slicey in the, in the, the, the pocket knife world, you might also have something, you know, for instance, if you are carrying a multi-tool, you might want to have a bead of blade that's a little bit thicker, that's a little bit more abusable, so to speak. You might carry a fixed blade or something like that. If you're going to be doing a lot of beading, you'll want to have a synergy between those kinds of things. Or if you, you know, just carrying one thing, well, you might have something a little more all around you, right? Similarly, if you are going to be uh, carrying anything electronic, you might want to make sure that they're all using the same charger. For instance, this uh, light right here, and by the way, whether a charging belongs in a light is a big question as to the do one thing, do it well. Um, that, that, that's definitely a concern, but you want to make sure that it's not the case that your light is micro USB, but then your, 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 uh, your charging pack is USB-C or something like that. And see, this is the Nightcore tip, by the way. Uh, tip SE, that is. But you want to make sure that you're using the same you know, form, uh, uh, charging formats for all your things. Ideally, you just have the one, right? I mean, it'd be really nice just to standardize the USB-C. Apple, come on, do it. Anyways, I digress. Similarly, if you're carrying something that uses batteries, try and standardize batteries. Make sure that the tools you're using are all using 18650s or double uh, A's or something like that. That can be helpful. If you're carrying a bunch of different screwdrivers, well, then try and make the bits interchangeable. Use some kind of a standard bit here. Or if you're using, for instance, a multi-tool bit kit, try and find other tools that work with that same bit kit. Although, again, simple tends to be a better thing there. Um, another thing that's important to think about here is, um, you know, if you're carrying sharpening tools, make sure it works with all of your edge tools. There are lots of sharpening approaches out there, and especially portable ones. One of the nice things about having something that is nice and portable, like, for instance, um, the, this is the Spyderco Golden Stone, but one of the nice things about this, and this is not portable in the classical sense necessarily. But the nice thing about this is it works with pretty much anything. It can be a flat bench stone, it can be. Um, and so this will work with any edge tool rather than something that's maybe a clamp-on system or uh, like one of the rod-based sort of things that might not work as well in some other situations. So it's a good idea to have something that works with everything you're doing. Basically, another way to think about this is that the sum of your everyday carry tools should be more powerful than the parts. It should be the case that you don't have a really good pry bar in your multi tool and carrying a separate pry bar. This is a uh, Serge Panchenko pry bar at the moment. This is uh, actually one of my favorite little guys uh, when it comes to prying, that is. 
But, um, you know, it, it's a good idea to make sure that there is a synergy among all of your various kind of things. And it's, again, it's probably a better idea to have a bunch of devices which can all work together. They can all, you can use together to accomplish a task rather than trying to have one thing that does all of those things all at once. Then finally, on the, in this, the portability over efficiency in using standard formats. On the computer world, this is crucial, right? I'm willing to bet that any of you who've used a computer for any amount of time have probably lost data because the program that that made it no longer runs, right? Whether it was, you know, you had files in Claris works. Yes, uh, that, 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 that's an old reference. Or you had, you know, who knows? You lost access to the software because you stopped paying them and so you can no longer open this picture. That's bad, right? So anytime, one of the core things in the Unix philosophy is like, try and do everything in text. And if you can't do a text, do some kind of standard format. But minimizing lock-in where you can is a beautiful thing. Um, mind you, I'm filming this on an iPhone right now. So I am a hypocrite. I, I understand this. But at the same time, as uh, wherever you can avoid that, that's good. You know, one of the things in terms of standardization is simplicity. Um, a simple tool, a tool that is really just basically a, says some metal, some wash, is, you know, you lubricate it and you're done. That's going to be really easy to maintain and keep running on your own, right? Even if, and I hope not, but even if TRM went out of business tomorrow, and it's Three Rivers, the maker of this, I could keep this guy running for the rest of my life. There's, there's no real problem there. As opposed to some other tools, like for instance, this Omega watch here. This is a great watch. I like it a lot. And by the way, hypocrite again. But this is using the Omega coaxial movement. It is a very fancy watch movement. It's very attractive. It's kind of awesome. But at the same time, uh, I will have to send this back to Omega to get it serviced when the time comes. And I am not capable of servicing it. I'm not capable of servicing any watch, really, effectively. Um, but nonetheless, that's kind of a downside, right? That's, in fact, a really big downside. I couldn't fix that if it went on. As opposed to a, a movement like this. This is a, a very, very basic uh, Swiss movement here. This is sort of the basic movement that pretty much everybody learns on in watchmaking school. Heck, it's simple enough that I was able to assemble this watch, right? the AWCI Builder Watch. But it's much easier if something happens to this movement to fix it than it would be if something happened here. So that's avoiding a lock-in of sort. Um, another thing that's important here is just think about proprietary screws as being your enemy. And again, filming it on a device with proprietary screws. But in the knife world, when people will use a proprietary screw, it drives me a little bit crazy. One of my very favorite makers that violates this over and over again is Herman Knives. Um, they, they, this is Herman Knives. This is the Herman Knives Dragonfly. Absolutely spectacular knife with an absolutely dumb pivot. Uh, right, he's now using some more torxy looking things, but if you can avoid makers that are using screws that they, and you know, the nice thing is he at least gives you the tool, but still, though, no. But it's a good idea to avoid things that you can't repair because of that. Or it's a good idea to avoid products that have an unusual cable. Oh, I don't know. Like the lightning standard from freaking Apple. Apple, USB-C is a thing. I'm sorry. Anyways, I digress. Um, but it's a good idea to try and use non-proprietary things wherever you can. And one other important thing to think about in the everyday carry world is legal limitations, right? For instance, if you're making a pack that you would throw in your, or if you're making like a kit, you could throw in your uh, pack every day and you'd want to carry with you all the time. You might not want to have an edge tool in there because, well, if you get, if you go flying, for instance, they're going to take it from you right? Or it might not be a good idea to have your kind of one-and-done carry include an automatic pocket knife, right? Um, the like, uh, tell me your automatic knife. Like this little guy is the Protec Knives Magic. Cali legal version. But anyways, it might not be a good idea to have an automatic knife as a part of your everyday carry because you might cross state lines and suddenly this might become a felony. That's a little bit of a portability issue. But in all of these cases, you're just trying your best to make sure that your gear is going to be able to work. Oh, and by the way, ink cartridges. Oh my God, ink cartridges. You know, it's one thing to use, you know, like for instance, a Pilot G2 cartridge or something like that. But you know, this pen here, the Pocket 6, is on the table because it's using, even though it's a fancy little pen, it's using a standard international ink cartridge, so I can replace this with any fountain pen cartridge roughly ever. Um, and that is an absolutely beautiful thing. So avoiding those kinds of things is absolutely great. Using standard formats and uh, avoiding proprietariness wherever you can is a, well, absolutely a beautiful thing. So look, um, I know that there's a little bit of a stretch here and going from Unix into everyday carry, but I think it is really important to think about these kinds of, well, things because they describe a good coherent philosophy for tools, right? If you have tools that do one 
thing and do them well with dedicated tools for jobs that you're doing all the time, right? If you do a lot of slicing, carry something slicey and maybe carry a generalist. I don't know. But having dedicated tools for the things that you do most is a beautiful thing and make sure those tools work well that's great. Make sure that your, pro, uh, that your various tools work together. You want synergy. You want the sum of what you're carrying to be greater than the, 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 the sum of the parts, basically. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. And then just trying to make sure that your gear is portable, that it works in a variety of situations, it works in a variety of contexts, legally speaking, and everything that you're using is standard. You're not going to get locked out of your tool because the company who made the movement no longer functions or because... I don't know, the proprietary screw that they're using doesn't, you know, you can't get a driver for it. You can't make one. Um, oh, by the way, freaking proprietary screws. Thanks, Leatherman. Although these are just security talks. You can find a million bits for these. I think I even have some handy. But anyways, I, I digress. Um, th These things are all really important. So although good old-fashioned Unix is maybe feeling a little antiquated to some days, you know, I, I talk to some of the kids at work and they're like, okay, boom. But at the same time, it forms a really powerful set of tools for everyday life. And I, I, I think a a lot of the good thinking there about the things that we use every day and the things that allow us to get work done applies pretty straightforwardly in the everyday carry world too. So anyways, there you go. Nerdiest damn thing I've, well, probably done this week, maybe eh, today. Um, but anyways, hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. Colin WQ. Eh, Vim joke? Okay. Bye now.